Welcome back to our learning course. In this lesson, we start talking about animal memory. So far, we have learned a lot about how animals learn without asking for how long they can remember what they learn or how much they can learn. This lesson covers long-term memory, while the next lessons will talk about short-term memory. Memories can have different durations, but it is useful to contrast short-term memories that last a few seconds or minutes and long-term memories that can last weeks, months, or even years. Learning experiments are often about long-term memory. For example, when you train a rat to dislike a food or to be afraid of a sound that signals shock, that rat will remember what it has learned for a long time. Let's see what we know about animal long-term memory. Popular culture is full with stories of animals that seem to remember things for a very long time. For example, elephants are believed to never forget, especially if you treat them badly. And there are also many stories of dogs waiting for many years for the return of, of a deceased owner. For example, in this video we see two chimpanzees meeting with a former caretaker about 25 years after they last saw each other. Thanks to the fact that chimpanzees share many behavioral similarities with humans, it's easy to see that they can remember the caretaker clearly and also that they have great affection for her. This kind of evidence, which is based on chance observations and not scientific experiments, is usually called anecdotal evidence by scientists, and generally it is believed to be not as solid as scientific knowledge. The reason is that there are many unknowns in anecdotal evidence. For example, the dog that waits for the owner may be waiting for food, not for the owner, or maybe it is waiting to go outside or for something else yet. But the stories and the YouTube videos are so many that there must be at least some truth in them, right? How do these stories compare with what we know from scientific experiments? When it comes to long-term animal memory, anecdotes are not much off the mark. This table shows the results of a few studies. We can see that species as varied as pigeons, monkeys, gorillas, sea lions, and horses have been shown to remember hundreds of stimuli for years. A skeptic might think that the animals might have used shortcuts rather than really remembering all the images used in these studies. Consider, for example, Vaughan and Green's experiment with pigeons. The images to remember were divided into two sets, and pigeons had to pick only those from one set. Maybe there were cues that make a shortcut possible. For example, the images to pack might have been brighter than those to ignore, or might have all had something else in common, like a common feature or object. But Vaughan and Green constructed their tests to be quite difficult. In one experiment, all images were random squiggles, like those in this image. In another experiment, the pictures to pack were the mirror image of the pictures to ignore. So there was nothing that the pigeon could do other than remember whether to peck or not every single image. Other studies have shown that animals can easily store hundreds or thousands of memories. A few years ago, Cook and colleagues showed that pigeons can remember a thousand or more images, and baboons even 5,000. The dog chaser, a border collie, could remember the name of more than 1,000 toys and fetch them on demand. This picture is of a stack of her toys. Chaser would also understand some verbs and sentences. Chaser was trained using play as her reward instead of the food rewards that most trainers use. On, on YouTube, you can find many interesting videos about her with her owner, John Pilly, a psychology professor at Wofford College. Just search YouTube for dog chaser memory. We saw in our class on instrumental and Pavlovian conditioning that there are some associations that animals cannot learn or that they learn with difficulty. For example, a rat will learn easily to associate a flavor with illness, but will have a hard time associating a sound with illness. This means that not all memories are formed with equal ease. We also saw that most of the time animals have trouble learning about events that are separated in time by more than a few minutes at most. We saw some examples in the class on Pavlovian conditioning, see the part on the ISI curve, but a similar limitation is true in instrumental conditioning. For example, if the reward comes too late after an action is performed, an animal will not learn to perform that action. Because of these limitations, sometimes animals have needs that are not well served by vanilla associative learning. Either the associative learning system must be tuned in some special way to serve these needs, or a different kind of learning is needed. Two ways in which associative learning can be tuned is by adjusting the learning speed 
and adjusting how long memory of a stimulus lasts. For example, ducklings must learn to follow their mother very quickly, while usually associative learning needs many trials. Learning taste illness associations must also be quick, and in addition it needs to bridge a long time gap, because illness can occur many hours after an animal eats something bad. It is also known that many animals learn more quickly about places than about other things. We will see in future lessons how we can modify an associative learning rule to learn more quickly and to bridge longer time gaps. Sometimes fine-tuning associative learning does not seem enough. We are not going to go into much detail here, but I'll mention two examples. Many birds have elaborate songs that they learn from hearing other birds singing. What you're hearing in the background is a sedge warbler, the bird in the picture. Learning songs is so complex that it seems hard to consider it just another example of associative learning. For example, the birds are not rewarded or punished by any external event while they learn their song. Another example is that of hoarding birds. This image is of a bird called Clark's Nutcracker. These birds bury pine seeds in the ground from the spring to the fall when the seeds are available and retrieve them in the winter when food is scarce. The astonishing fact is that they can bury up to 100,000 seeds in up to 25,000 different locations and remember these locations for up to nine months. This is not because they have extraordinary memory across the board. Their memory for other things, in fact, is quite average. But they have a specialized memory system for seed locations that they use only for this particular purpose, as far as we know. This is another memory system that seems hard to understand as just a tweaking of vanilla associative learning. What exactly animals remember of their experiences is one of the most difficult questions in animal learning. In fact, it is the question that psychologists have paid more attention to. We have already met this question under a different name. In the lesson, Do Animals Imagine the Future? If you look back at that lesson, you can see that for the most part, we were asking what animals remember. Is their memory made up of stimulus response associations, or does it contain more information? For example, consider this table, which refers to instrumental conditioning. The simplest kind of memory that has been considered for instrumental conditioning is a stimulus response memory. The pros of this memory are that it is cheap, in that you have to store little information. It is also fast to use. Whenever you see a stimulus, you just perform the response that it is associated with it. The cons, of course, is that stimulus response learning is limited in what it can do. It does not support the animal in thinking about the future and in planning what to do. For example, when a rat lever presses for food, it would not remember that the reason it presses that lever is to get some food, and it cannot change its behavior depending on whether it wants food or not. As I just recalled, we talked about this in the lesson, Do Animals Imagine the Future? At the other extreme, Animals could store everything that happens. In instrumental learning, this would be chains of events made up of a stimulus, a response to that stimulus, and the outcome of that response. When lever pressing for food, for example, a rat would remember that it is pressing before that earns it some food. So it could stop pressing if it does not want to eat. The problem of storing all this information is that it makes more demands on memory and also requires the rat to reason more instead of just reacting to stimuli. This is more flexible, but also more expensive in terms of memory and time. In future lessons, we will talk more about what animals remember and what kind of reasoning they can make. This lesson is over. Here are some suggestions on what to study next. The other lessons on memory deal with shorter memory. Later on, we will have more lessons that are relevant to the question of what information animals actually remember when they form a memory. Happy learning to everyone.